forest growth timber in the metropolitan area. Today, the forest remains in its natural state, although it has been subject to many unnatural human disturbances. To combat threats to its ecosystem, the garden is deeply involved in continuous restoration and stewardship of the forest through the removal of invasive species and the planting of native trees, shrubs, and wildflowers. Ahead on side B, you'll see an arched stone bridge. That area is called Twin Lakes for the lakes on either side of that bridge. A century ago, it was a lively spot for ice skating in winter. While there's no more skating, the lakes are still popular with water birds and seasonally migrating flocks. On our free Saturday morning bird watching tours, garden visitors have spotted more than 200 species. Again on side B is a group of modern buildings, which includes the Pfizer Lab, home of the Lewis B. and Dorothy Coleman program for molecular systematics, and the largest and finest research laboratory in any botanical garden in the nation. Here, experts study the genealogy of plants and fungi. Much of the garden's primary plant research takes place in nearby William and the Steer herbaria, which houses more than 7 million dried specimens, some dating to the 1700s. The garden's research and conservation programs are among the most comprehensive and far-reaching in the world. Areas of research include plant molecular biology, natural resource management, and habitat preservation. Our programs stimulate discussion and disseminate information in order to help develop effective responses to environmental challenges. In fact, this tram runs on four natural gas, reducing emissions and air pollution. We thank ComEd for their sponsorship of this effort to protect the environment and human health. The inspiration for the New York Botanical Garden was the magnificent Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew, outside London. The New York Botanical Garden's first director visited Kew with his wife during their honeymoon in 1888. On their return, they successfully lobbied for a New York garden of equal beauty. In 1891, the New York Botanical Garden was incorporated by the state legislature with the intention of being a public botanic garden of the highest class. Four years later, the founders selected this site, which had already been purchased by the city of New York, and enlisted Calvert Vox, co-creator of Manhattan's Central Park, as the chief designer. The founders recognized that the property was blessed with a variety of microclimates for growing plants. And they also knew that the city's remaining wilderness was fast disappearing. So they set out to preserve it, too. As we turn off the main road, we'll be driving through two rows of American tulip trees planted over a century ago. A tree